This is Creating Your Encore Career and Becoming a Silver Entrepreneur with your host, Lynn Freest. Lynn will share ideas and expert advice from people that are walking in your shoes and living their encore careers, where they want and at the pace they want. You'll start a company of one with confidence and knowledge to live a fulfilled life of freedom and ease. Lynn is a coach and leadership consultant whose mission is to show senior leaders and experts how to start something refreshing and new after a full career in the corporate environment. Hello and welcome to this episode of the podcast, Creating Your Encore Career. This is episode number 107. Now, my goal in creating your encore career is to help you create a compelling future for yourself, or as I like to say, become a silver entrepreneur. I will also be sharing ideas on how companies can connect with the talent that you could provide them and create value for both the organization and for you. As always, I encourage you to visit my website and download the summary at the bottom of the podcast episode and use that as a tool to capture notes as you explore the concepts in this episode. And if you're considering starting an encore career, please take the self-assessment quiz to help you create some quick clarity around your possible choices in a future career. Well, today we're going to have a conversation with Jody V. Jody has been a friend and colleague and a coach for several years. I've always enjoyed working with her. She comes from a business background of finance and accounting and has now moved into helping women use nutrition and wellness through her new business called Aging Strong Life. Jody also helps coach others who are building their own personal brand businesses. Again, I think you'll get a lot of value. Jody is very knowledgeable and just a wonderful person to share her insights and knowledge. So some of the questions we're going to discuss, uh, what did she learn in making her own transition to a personal business? How has she approached learning new technologies that she needs? What are the three groups that she thinks every entrepreneur needs to be in? Finally, what are some of the new skills that she recommends new entrepreneurs learn that they may not have needed in their corporate life? Again, Jody has provided with many valuable insights and support as we've worked together over the years. Let's get started. Well, today we're here with Jody V, a good friend and colleague. And uh, we're looking forward to talking about some of the things that are helpful as you begin your encore career. And to start with, I'd just like to ask Jody to introduce herself as well as tell us about what she's up to these days. Hey, Lynn, thanks so much. It's just a, a joy and a privilege to be here with you today. I am Jody V. I'm actually Jody Von Comica. That is my true name. I go by Jody V online just to make it a little bit easier. But I have a 30 plus year business background. I have been working in accounting and financial management for most of my career and recently pivoted to full time entrepreneurship online. Great. So I'm sure there's some things that you noticed is that was a different part of a career now. <laughs> yes, different different career, but, you know, using and pulling all of those skills from, you know, a lifetime career forward, for sure. What is your new brand that you're working on now? I currently serve nutrition and fitness clients at agingstronglife.com. So I have been interested in nutrition and fitness in my entire life. In fact, it goes way, way back into my high school years. I played competitive tennis and I thought that I wanted to go to school to be a medical doctor and sat down with dad. You know how that goes, Uh, you know, back in the day, sat down with dad and he's like, well, you're going to have to figure out how to put yourself through school. And to do that, I started taking accounting courses and that sort of thing and realized that I really like that, but I never lost my love for the biology, the biological sciences and nutrition and that sort of thing. Now I did not pursue medical school, but again, it, it's kind of stayed with me, the thought of that my entire life. So been very active throughout my life and career and wanted to help people as they are growing older to age strong. And I kind of detest anti-aging, that whole movement about anti-aging, because the moment we take our first breath, we are aging. And I am just passionate about helping women become mentally and physically strong to regain energy for a life they love. A lot of times we have you know, served our families and communities and work, career, all of that. We hit our mid-40s and, you know, have this awakening to 
needing to address our health. And uh, maybe we've taken that for granted over a couple of years. And I really would like to help women pay attention to that in their 40s and beyond. So that's that's what I currently do now, as well as doing some business coaching. So you can never leave your past, right? That's right. Yeah, I certainly. And you've helped me as a coach too. So I do appreciate that. So as I was thinking, as you think about your transition there, what are some key things that happened as you went from this business and finance work into more of this health and nutrition work? What was different between the business world, the corporate world, and being in an entrepreneurial world? Different kinds of stress, right? So the the last position I held, I was a business manager for a private school in Atlanta, Georgia, and um, loved that work. I served there for eight years. There were some financial challenges there. So there were some things that really, really difficult sometimes from day to day, the work challenges. We were also at the time, my husband's mother lived with us. So we were care- We were kind of in that sandwich generation where we were caring for an elderly parent. I started thinking about making a change, I want to say around 2013 or so. And I do nothing about the online world at all. I had only served in corporate My husband and I had owned some different businesses and things over the years. So I've just been involved in a lot of different type of uh, business, but never online. And, you know, kept kind of hearing about this. And I had been doing some nutrition and fitness research and kind of diving into that. And I encountered a coach who I started working with personally. So a little bit about my journey was I worked with this coach personally, and then we ended up going into business together. And so I started my entrepreneurial online career as a side hustle, which a lot of people do. And that can work with um, an encore career as well. You may be close to the end of your corporate career or whatever and looking at for some other changes or opportunities. And I knew that I didn't want to continue in finance and accounting in the same way or role that I did, but I wasn't exactly sure what that looked like. Came into partnership with um, two other nutrition coaches, and we did that on the side for about five years and had a lot of fun with it. And we were just figuring it out together. So that was fun, but I still had the big job too. So I was working full time, probably 50 hours a week and doing this other thing on the side, as well as helping my husband care for his mom. And then we were doing pretty good financially in this little side hustle and decided I had told my husband, I want to make a change. And the way I made the change and what is different about, we'll talk about what's different between the entrepreneurial world and corporate or in office work is managing your time. I think your your time is the way that equates out is so much different, right? Than when having your day pretty much planned out for you. But I decided to make a a shift. And how I did that was I I told my employer, I was going to kind of give a pretty long runway for them to find a replacement because I had a lot of responsibilities that had to be shifted off. And we looked for the replacement, replacement came. And then what I did was transition for six months, which was super fun because Somebody else was responsible, but I was there kind of part-time making sure everything, you know, transitioned well. And at the same time could pour into, you know, at least half time into my entrepreneurial business. And that was a, just a really wonderful way to kind of have, you know, a foot in both worlds and have time to do what was needed, but not be fully responsible during the transition. So I don't know if that answered your question, but, and what's different? I think the biggest thing that was different is how I managed my time. And we can talk more about that. Well, and that's, yeah, I would certainly agree with you. All of a sudden you have all the time and you have to decide how to use it, but it's easy, easy to get lost in that complete freedom. You don't have that same structure. You don't even, you don't even have the same set of habits. And habits, I think, really tend to structure your time. And so the habits of the corporate world or the business world are now you can make them anything you want, but you do have to make them. <laughs> right. You definitely do have to make them. And, and truthfully, it took me a year to really get in sync with that. And even now, after having the same habits for so many years, right, I was up, I was a 5 a.m.er 
you know, up in the morning, got my exercise and lifting work in, you know, had breakfast, hit the, I was at my desk by seven to seven thirty AM every single day. And then there was a routine to the week as well as a routine to the day, though I had a very, very busy schedule between managing parents and an administrative team and the entire administrative office, as well as liaison with the board of education and all of that stuff. There was always a lot going on, but there was a cycle to it. It was, I worked for a school. So it was, there's the school year, the, you know, the big meso cycle, and then you get into the, you know, the break cycles and all the reporting cycles. There's just a rhythm and a routine. When I, I moved, you know, to my own business. It's like, I I was trying to get that same routine and it just, it wasn't working for me. And even now I sleep a little bit later than I used to, which is kind of nice. That's been, and I also don't have a commute. My commute is across the hall, which is fantastic. But the one thing I do miss about that commute is I had a mobile university in my car. I listened to podcasts and audiobooks, and that's really how I became familiar with what was happening in this whole online space is I listened to different people. That's how I got connected with um, some mentors and that sort of thing. So it's been an interesting experience so far, for sure. So as you think about then some of the skills that you've learned now that were different than what you used in your finance job. So how did you think about choosing which skills to learn and which skills to get help with? And then how did you actually build those skills and find the time or the practice? Hmm. One of the things that I was encouraged to think about, I really how I started this online journey was with Dan Miller, 48 Days to the Work You Love. I remember this. So I was sitting up, was visiting my daughter up in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and had nothing to do. I was listening to one of Dan's podcasts and a gentleman named Jonathan Milligan, who we're both familiar with, was a guest on his podcast and started talking about blogging your passion and that, which was Jonathan's former brand. He now does market your message. And I wasn't totally familiar with what skills were going to be required of me, although having had a business career, you know, I was used to working in various platforms and doing some behind the scenes setup and programming of tech and enrollment systems and just different things like that, as well as was very familiar with QuickBooks and, you know, other financial software. So software didn't feel daunting to me, but that was one of the things that, you know, it's like, okay, well, how do I get a home base? You know, how do I get a website? site, what's required. I didn't know what an email service provider was or, you know, any of these things. So um, as I listened to Dan and then began following Jonathan, I started to learn about, you know, different tools that were required along the process in order to build a platform. And then from Jonathan, I got acquainted with Mike Kim, who you and I are both familiar with, who talks about branding and marketing. And so I really didn't have an education in those areas other than the general classes you take in your bachelor's or whatever in college. And so I decided just to pick a couple of people that I was going to follow and learn as much as I can from. And so that's how I just kind of figured it out. I read books and I found a couple of people that I felt like I could trust and followed them. And that has kind of what has bumped it along in the process. Did that answer the question? I don't want to be long-winded here. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, that's an interesting piece for people who are uh, experts in some field, often in the corporate world, you know, our brand is our resume or our position mm-hmm. or any of those things. And well, now all of a sudden we actually have to be a little more conscious about what is our brand as you work with aging strong or whatever, what is that? And I I remember one of the first ahas I had was the about page or the LinkedIn uh, profile is not really about me. It's about how I can help someone else. Because in the corporate world, you're always talking about yourself in terms of, well, I'm the vice president of something or other. And uh, now all of a sudden, nobody cares what that is. They care, can you help them? (laughs) 
Yeah, there definitely is a shift in mindset because being an employee versus owning your own business, yeah, as an employee, you're responsible for one set of things, right? But when you become an entrepreneur or have your own business, you suddenly are faced with somebody's got to handle accounting and bookkeeping. You need to have some experience with copywriting and marketing or, and, and then sales is a little bit different animal. And then, you know, behind the scenes, some tech setup. One of the things that I hear often is we take our skill set and we move into a space where we want to serve an audience, but we realize we're it. When you start, you're it. And so what I like to encourage people to do, and this is what I did for myself, is I really leaned into my strengths. So I love when I coach emerging business owners to look at the strength finders, the Gallup strength finders, and get a handle on what your strengths are and play to your strengths and delegate your weaknesses. Know what they are. But the thing is, you don't have to do this online entrepreneurial space alone. There are plenty of people to help. You can hire VAs, whatever your resources are, you can likely find someone that can help you with the process. I also do hear a lot when people come into the space, they're very intimidated by the tech. And I have to say, I really wasn't intimidated by the tech. And I told myself a different story. And I like to encourage emerging business owners to think the same way, not to be intimidated by the tech, but lean in into being a leading learner to the point where you can take action or you know enough about it that you can delegate it to somebody else if you need to. And then you play to your strengths, delegate out to your weaknesses. And the tech, I think if you tell yourself a different story about the tech, that seems to be the biggest roadblock I find with people wanting to step in from being an employee to owning their own business is thinking about all the online tech. But I encourage people to tell themselves a different story, that they have done many, many things in their career. Where we are now is very different than the tech was, say, in 2000, where you were really cobbling code together and doing all that sort of thing, although you can do some coding. But there's so many ways that you can set up your website with limited coding these days and all-in-one platforms that make it super easy. And it's just a matter of wanting to you know, dive in and get your hands a little bit dirty with the tech side of things. Yeah, and I've, I often, one, I've experienced it myself and tell others, that it's really amazing what you can do for yourself as far as being a business of one, and yet the tools are much easier to use, as you said, than they were before. And then there's so many resources available, whether it be, you know, there's that tool called Fiverr, where you don't know how to do a little short video to put on the video you record. Fiverr, somebody will do that for you for a limited amount of money. Fiverr is only $5, but it's usually a little more than that. But And then there's higher cost things and higher quality things that you can use. But I still think it's amazing in today's world that we can be a company of one and yet we can have a lot of resources there to help us make that work. Absolutely. And and you have to think about that. It depends what you want, right? So you could say, hey, I'm going to have an online business and I'm totally fine with running a team of 5, 10, 20, 25 people. I mean, there's people that are online that have huge teams that are working behind the scenes, helping them. I personally didn't want that. I don't want to manage a team of any more than four or five people. And they generally, they will not be employees. They'll be contractors. So I will call them in as needed to do various things. And that's the beauty of it is there is this whole contract economy that has emerged in the last five to 10 years where maybe your specific skill set is coming alongside another entrepreneur and providing, you know, maybe it's copywriting services, or maybe if you're, maybe you were engineering or tech, maybe you do some technical writing. I mean, there's so many different things. Maybe you've been an executive assistant and you've sat in in front of somebody's, you know, office and and help them for years. But now you'd like to do that. Maybe, maybe you don't want to do that 40 hours a week anymore. Maybe you just like to do it 10. And there are people like you, Lynn and myself that have a need for that sort of thing. And so those are called virtual assistant businesses. And so there's, there's so many different ways for silver entrepreneurs or encore entrepreneurs to step into this space 
as well as maximizing their current skill sets, right? So you're coming out of corporate world, you've been very immersed and entrenched in a particular area, and now you want to come alongside and offer those services to multiple companies, maybe either as a consultant or a coach, or even helping the younger generation become more seasoned in that area in which you've had your hands deep in for the last how many ever years. And so there's so many opportunities to do that online. And like you said, Lynn, it's about serving, right? So it's about how do you want to serve? And I would also be asking the question is what is the need out there? That's one thing that's super important to do is do some research on where your passion, your expertise, and where the market's need exists. So you can find a way that will be economically sustaining for you to step out into the entrepreneurial space. Sure, absolutely. Came to mind as we were you were talking there that, uh, you know, for people who have a, a particular expertise and maybe don't want to be involved in the tech, uh, we, we have a colleague we know, uh, Jody Mayberry, works with a gentleman with Lee Cockrell, who was an executive VP at Disney. Well, Lee didn't want to get involved in all the details. So Jody partnered with him and Jody handles his podcast and does a lot of the online stuff. So Lee takes his expertise and just shows up about leadership and talks about leadership. And so others of us will do more, be more involved in, quote, the business that we're in. But I think there's a, a wide variety of ways you can all approach that. So that's, you know, wonderful. Right, right. And it, it does. It really just depends on what level you want to enter in at. Anybody from an executive like Lee can do it and hire somebody to come alongside him to handle all of those things or a team all the way down to the do-it-yourselfer who, you know, is just one or two people and, you know, have some things. The thing I loved about the coaching group I was in before the OmniFit, there were three of us ladies. And what was super fun about that is we all had different areas of expertise. And so that's the area of expertise that we picked up in the business, as well as, you know, we were coaching nutrition and fitness, but behind the scenes, we really, Taylor loved social media. Kayla loved the marketing. I loved the tech part of it and, you know, the business and accounting side of it. And we came together as a really tight knit team to make that thing work. And so there's so many different ways to structure and to think about, but the first question is, is how do you want to serve? And in what way do you want to serve? How can you help? And, you know, what is the the mission and the idea, what transformation do you want to bring to people in this season of your life? Right. Yeah. And you mentioned other real working with other colleagues. And I, again, encourage people to say, uh, you and I have both been involved in peer groups or masterminds, however you want to describe that. But that whole, even though you may have a coach or someone who's providing a lot of knowledge, that working with a group of people on a similar journey can be very, really help you a lot because you'll learn from the questions each of you have, you'll learn from the mistakes. So that peer group, I think, is another thing that can really help, even though their journeys and their products or their companies may be different than yours. Yeah, I think about this. It reminds me of Jay Abrahams, who is a legend in the marketing space. He talks about not only the idea of preeminence and finding where is that position in the marketplace that you can serve, but he really moves into ideas as well about coaching and related to coaching and being present. You always want to be in three situations, a group that is your peers that, that are kind of on the same level of you that you can bounce ideas off of, you know, you just there for encouragement for each other. You want to be in a room where you're the smartest person in the room, where you can guide and direct other people. And then you want to be in that other room where everybody else is far above you. And you're just in a position of learning and listening. And when you have positioned yourself in groups like that, three strategic groups, It's just amazing the growth that can happen. And I'm sure many of the professionals that are listening to this this podcast already know that. And it's okay to be a beginner. I tell people as they come into the space, it's really, really hard after having, you know, a big career for 30 years, right? And then all of a sudden you're stepping into a space where you feel like you know nothing at all. And I just always encourage people. It's like, it's okay to be a beginner again, wake up and be a beginner every single day. And it's exciting that the people you get to meet and the opportunities and things that you get to learn on a daily basis. And that's, what's been really exciting to me about 
being in this whole entrepreneurial space. Well, Jody, I have a, a note that's on my computer that I look at every day that you shared your thoughts with me. It said, Lynn, you have to be comfortable practicing in public. And so <laughs> that's hard because, uh, again, from a corporate career, practicing making mistakes in public wasn't something I was uh, all that comfortable with. <laughs> so I'm still not, but I'm getting better at it. <laughs> right. I think, though, we can reposition what we feel like are mistakes and reposition them to learning experiences. Like we're gathering data really as we make different decisions and choices. And I have to laugh because <laughs> I've already had my fair share. But every time I make a mistake, I have the opportunity to learn. And the thing is, is just don't give up. You just keep moving on. And you know a little bit more probably than the next person that hasn't made that mistake. And what's great is when you're in those peer groups, right? You can share. It's safe space. You can be vulnerable and you can say, ah, this is what went wrong for me. And by the way, watch out for this. And so it's a matter of being able to, you know, share that. And, you know, there's, I think there too, there's this difference between feeling confident in the skills and the knowledge that we already have versus, you know, being able to be humble, not be cocky and be teachable. And that I think as we move into our later years is reminding ourselves that we need to be as teachable as much as we are teaching others as well. Yeah, I, I always try to encourage people that in this whole idea of an encore career, you do have to own your expertise. You've got it. So you have to own that. But then you also have to be the apprentice. You're learning other aspects and still holding your expertise out there. You do have and people need. So it's an interesting thing. And again, maybe not the kind of uh, thing you might would have experienced maybe a lot of in your corporate career. Yeah, I, I think it just depends on, you know, what you've had the opportunity to do over your career. But isn't it exciting? I think it's so exciting to think about, hey, just because I'm 55, 60, 65, 70, I can still be, you know, a productive member of this whole community of people, online space. Like there's so much knowledge to be shared and it would make me sad to think that somebody felt like they couldn't do it because of either the tech obstacles or they feel like, oh, maybe they're too old or they don't have the energy or whatever. There's so much abundance that we have gathered over the years. I just want to see more and more people, especially like my platform, Aging Strong. I want people to be healthy into their later years so that they can have an encore career, right? So they can have the energy and the excitement to be able to pass on the experience, the learning, the education, the expertise that they have, you know, moving forward to younger generation, even 10 years younger, right? Perhaps or, or more. So super fun. Lots of value there. Yeah. And that's one of the things that drives me is some people have talked about the, you know, we're getting closer to the hundred year life. Well, so if people are retiring in their sixties, are you really going to play golf for 40 years? I mean, and then with people like you helping, we'll be healthier longer in those lives. And then, you know, just in today's economy, everybody's saying we don't have enough help or we have to involve uh, new people, new talent uh, that has been underserved in the past. So who better to help develop that new talent and maybe people that do have that experience, but they don't want to necessarily be working 50 hours a week in a job, but they'd be perfect fit to be sharing their experience with the new talent that's growing up. Right. And, you know, when you think about knowledge, knowledge is growing so quickly, right? But still that practical experience of, you know, like your career itself. Yes, maybe technologies change and the tools change or that sort of thing. But there is a platform and a base foundation of knowledge that does need to be imparted and carried on that I think, you know, I, I kind of have a tendency to think that a four-year education anymore is probably way overvalued. There are young people coming into the online space wanting to connect in different marketplaces and in different areas, even production and the things that you talk about, Lynn, or have talked about in the past, that they need the impartation of this knowledge 
in the way that it's been done in the past so that it can be applied to future and future technologies. And so I think there's just wide open space for people that are moving into Encore careers. I think about this, my grandmother's 97. She is still kicking. I want to be as equally active, you know, up until my 90s or beyond. And I can't even think about who I love golf, but I don't want to play golf for <laughs> the next 40 years either. You know, the thing that occurs to me as we're, we're talking here is that the people with experience, it's just that. They've seen the exceptions, you know, whether it be, oh, they went through two or three recessions. Some people just coming up haven't seen a recession before kind of a thing. And then the issues that we've dealt with in, in a longer career, usually it also involves people. Now, whether we have articulated that or not, but we've dealt with a lot of people issues, not just technology issues. And for me, my perception is, interestingly enough, the people issues have stayed the same for a thousand years. You know, uh, we still haven't solved those permanently. <laughs> Right. And there is that impartation of emotional intelligence and, you know, be able to communicate and problem solve. We've experienced a lot of problems in our careers, like what you talk about, recession or all different kinds of things. Right. So those skills are what comes alongside being apprenticed and mastermind, you know, being in company of other people and like the three groups that I was talking about. And I would recommend anybody that is wanting to make a shift in their career right now. It could be an all or nothing kind of thing. You can, you know, go decide today I'm retiring and I'm moving on and doing another thing. You can do it like I did and transition over a period of a year, 18 months, two years after having had the side hustle. There's so many different ways to do that, but I would recommend that you search for three different types of groups. Like I talked about a group that you can lead, which is probably has a lot to do with your expertise a group of peers that are maybe not doing exactly the same thing as you, but are cultivating a same skill set in entrepreneurial business. And then look for a mentor, someone that you can follow or a group of people that have a lot more expertise in the area that you aspire to. So having those three groups makes a huge difference. Lynn, I know you have a mastermind that you are working on putting together for Encore entrepreneurs. And I think that would be a great place for people to start for sure. You can get shiny object syndrome in this business as well. So I recommend that you don't follow all the gurus. You you just pick a couple of people and you kind of stay in that ecosystem and learn everything you can and then move on. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And yes, I have had shiny object syndrome. (laughs) We all have. Well, I'm not, I don't consider myself a tech expert. I do enjoy tech. And so, boy, there's a new tech tool. And then finally, I just have to say, well, now is not the time I need to learn that particular one. (laughs) Right, right. I love this too. You know, our friend, Mike Kim, who actually just published a book, You Are the Brand, which is fantastic. But our joint friend, Mike Kim, talks about, you know, the teacher will show up when needed. And I love his concept um, that he taught us early on was decide what you want to learn and learn it and focus all in there before you move on to something else. So if you just focus on one thing at a time, until you're successful and gather the information you need. This relates to courses and things like that. Some of us have been course junkies over the past. I am so guilty of that, but it has helped me learn the skills that I needed to move forward. But my biggest uh, suggestion is just do one of those things at a time. (laughs) Yeah, the other phrase that Mike uses on that is success is sequential, not simultaneous. So That's uh... right. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. Yeah, so. For sure. So as you've uh, been coaching others, any uh, common themes that have come up if, as you've coached people as they begin their business life or whether it be an encore career or just starting a, a business at all? There's a couple of themes that I think come up. Lynn, of course, we talked about the tech, the mindset around the tech and how to overcome that. The other one is oftentimes people want to have a business, but they're afraid to sell. And when you are in the online space, entrepreneurial space, or any business space for that matter, this is another, goes back to that first question you asked me, what's the difference between an employee and an entrepreneur? You know, as an owner of your business, you need to be cognizant of making the sale. So you have to be confident in what you have to offer and learning some basic sales skills about how to actually 
convert people from following you to actually wanting to join along with what it is that you're offering and the transformation that you're offering to help them. So that's one thing that comes up is people can do the background, they can set up the courses or the masterminds or that sort of thing, but then get a little bit stuck when it's time to actually ask for the sale. So depending on where you are in the employee space, maybe you're a salesperson and that comes really natural to you, but maybe you're an accountant or engineer and that wasn't so natural to me. And so that was one of the things that I needed to get some skills around to actually be able to close the sale. Another thing is just writing and writing well. So in order to make yourself known, you need to be a fairly decent writer or gain some help with writing around the copywriting. And that's a different skill set than just, say, writing a book or writing a report or something like that. So that is another thing that comes up where people, especially people that maybe have a background in English and journalism or writing, they kind of need to learn how to write a little bit differently when they move into this space. So more from a copywriting aspect. So those are the things I think. And then, you know, it's just the confidence, the mindset around the confidence to step forward and believe that what you have has value and that people are willing to actually engage with you and what you have to offer. Well, that's great, Jody. Thank you so much. You've offered a tremendous amount of insight and I appreciate that. I'm honored that you could join us. Any other final thoughts that you could share with the audience about your journey or what you're up to next? Well, I would just like to encourage your listener just to step into it and to explore. And as I mentioned before, take an assessment of your gifts and your experiences. That's one of the great places to start. What are you passionate about? What are your experiences? Look at like the Gallup Strength Finders and kind of, you may already intuitively know those things, but you might want to spend some time, just a little bit of time really thinking about who you are, what your experience have been and what you'd like to offer into the world in these next steps. And then seek out people like yourself, Lynn, myself, I'm currently available, other folks that can help you along the journey and just prepare to be a beginner and ask questions. And I truly believe that the teacher will appear when needed for sure. Yep. Absolutely. Well, again, thank you so much, Jody. It's been a true pleasure. I've enjoyed it. I'll include your contact information in the show notes so that people can check in with you. Yeah. Yes, I can be reached at Jody at agingstronglife.com. My website is agingstronglife or jodyv.com. They both go to the same place. So I'd be happy to talk with anybody about the entrepreneurial step forward in the season of life or about Aging Strong so that they can do that. Lynn, thanks so much for having me today. I really appreciate your time. Thank you. Again, our thanks to Jody for a wealth of great insights for people developing their encore careers. Quick review. Here are some of the topics we covered. What did she learn in her transition to a personal business? How has she approached learning new technologies that she needs? What are three groups that she thinks every entrepreneur needs to be in? And finally, what are some of the new skills that she recommends new entrepreneurs learn? Now, in the show notes, there's going to be references to where you can contact Jody and her new upcoming website. And then finally, as always, I encourage you to visit my website and download the summary at the bottom of the podcast episode as you start your exploration of the ideas that Jody shared with us today. So thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.